for shame. Like, you should really be embarrassed with yourself to project your worldviews onto a game. Hey everybody, it's George from Gaming My Whole Life, where we discuss everything video games. Now, today we are discussing Days Gone, and more specifically, why Days Gone is the underdog that everyone loves, myself included. The game has actually gone forward to sell 8 million units. Here in that statistic, you would assume that it was a raging success from the very beginning. It absolutely was not. This is one of those rare games that built momentum after the fact when word of mouth managed to go around and when fans such as myself discovered it frankly too late, but then we tried our best to make up for it. And there's an interesting story as to why all this happened in the first place. And of course, if you do end up enjoying today's video, you know what to do. Please hit the like button. That's nice community feedback. You're saying, hey, Georgie, you're doing a good job. And uh, do consider subscribing as I cover everything video game related. So let's start with some of the basic facts about Days Gone to get you up to speed. So it was a brand new Sony IP that came out on the PlayStation 4 and it launched um, April 26th, 2019. What's interesting is the developers, Ben Studios, are actually the same people who made, remember Siphon Filter? Remember that retro game all the way back from the PlayStation 1 era, which I have done a retrospective of and review on this channel? Yeah, it's the same freaking years. Now, they spent roughly six years developing this game, and it was um, unveiled for the first time at E3 2016. Now, what's interesting about Days Gone is, in case you're a little bit unfamiliar or to remind you, Days Gone is a third-person open world zombie apocalypse game where you have a motorbike and you are a biker. The concept is actually very weird and frankly, no disrespect, I'll let you know up front, I am a huge fan. But at first, me and many others, we didn't care for the concept. It's like, okay, there's another zombie game. It's open world, okay, cool, whatever. You're a biker. If you're not into bikes, then that does it, that's not a selling point to you. It's like, cool, okay, I play games where sometimes I'm um, driving a car and sometimes I'm riding a bike like what it didn't sell it however when we had a look at the E3 2016 gameplay it looked interesting but confusing all we saw was a guy shooting at zombies and granted there was a lot of zombies that was a selling feature it's like hey check out this zombie game there's like 50 of them on the screen and having them charge at you like we're not talking resident evil walk slowly i mean these things are like you know saying bolting towards you right <laughs> and you're shooting and you're running and you're like okay cool there's a little bit of an interesting concept here but i'm going to need more it's like all right every time they showed a new trailer at every single E3 and so forth. It's like, all right, the graphics started to look a little bit better. It started to look a little bit more interesting. But the concept itself still hadn't done anything. On paper, Days Gone didn't sound too interesting, apart from, hey, there's going to be a lot of zombies and you're going to ride a bike. Bike enthusiasts were probably losing their mind in advance, but the rest of us are like, eh, like, we'll see. We'll see. We had interest. We're interested in the developer's former work. And of course, it was a Sony exclusive with many years development. Six years for Sony seems to be about the sweet spot for their games. Now, sadly, on release, we had to rely on reviews. I know hearing that these days is a little bit of a taboo, like, oh my goodness, you listen to reviews. But the truth is, you listen to reviews as well. When it comes to a game that is brand new, that you are uncertain of, of course you're going to see what other people have to say and see if there's similar occurrences. When Days Gone released, I wasn't super hyped for it, but I was curious enough where I was just thinking I might get this. Having a look at all the reviews, see, you look at lots of different reviews, I looked at five or six of them and uh, you put it together you see what the general perspective is and then you make an informed decision because the truth is the vast majority of us don't have enough money to always ignore reviewers and buy games regardless we can't afford to buy every single game that we're interested in especially at launch if we are uncertain so of course we listen to the reviewers for the most part and the reviewers described Days Gone in a really, really strange way. I remember thinking about this even back then, right? 
See, this was a brand new Sony IP. Now, normally when a brand new Microsoft game comes out or a brand new Nintendo game comes out, and especially if a brand new Sony game comes out, normally reviewers are like just praising the snot out of it. And yes, the vast majority of the time these games are good, but sometimes the reviewers overdo it. Like they just love it. It's, it's, it's like the best game ever every time, right? And yet Days Gone's reception was at best, at best, very lukewarm, very lukewarm. They didn't like the characters. They didn't like the story. They felt the dialogue was very unrelatable. Um, they felt the game wasn't really that fun. They basically said this game was boring, uninterested, like B2, I made a note here. It was buggy and boring, which is true. When you first launched, there was bugs and all that. So when the game launches that you are already uncertain about, that you already don't know if the idea of just having multiple zombies run at you, even though it was an impressive number, if that's enough. And maybe you do or don't care about the bike thing. And when you read a whole bunch of reviews that are like, this game is buggy, this game is boring, the characters are uninteresting. When you hear that enough time over enough reviews repeated repeatedly, chances are you're gonna be like, right, this doesn't seem like a must have immediate buy. And that's the decision I made. And it turned out that's the decision that a lot of people made. And games normally, historically, their success is dependent upon the release of a game because that's when the most hype and excitement is. Developers know within a couple days if a game is a raging success or not. And uh, Days Gone wasn't off to a good start. And Sony saw this and Sony was disappointed. And also because of that, that's why there is no Days Gone 2 despite the long-winded tale that got it a lot of extra sales and there's a lot more to discuss going forward okay so eventually enough time went days gone went on sale and i got round to buying the game it's like it was really cheap i bought it for barely anything right hmm. but even though i remembered vaguely that you know the reviews weren't so positive and all that there was always a thought at the back of my head that was really curious about how days gone would end up looking uh, and playing i mean i was always interested regardless and i thought you know what i'll buy it now that it's cheap even if it's bad at least i know and if it's good yay so i start playing this game and i am blown away by how freaking gorgeous gorgeous this game was right it really truly had the hallmark graphical standards that was set during the later stage of the playstation 4's lifespan you know with with the ghost of toshima's and the last of us and spider-man and so forth days gone was beautiful as you walk around the way the sun impacts the blades of grass the texture quality on the on the trees everything coming together the detail on your bike the character model himself looks fantastic i spent a lot of time just walking around up in the mountains i swear i could feel the fresh air in the location and the sound design as well really brought it together as well a minimalistic sound that really lets you take in the environment i'm walking around and just from a visual perspective we will definitely talk about the gameplay because that's where it shines the most. But from a visual perspective, I was gobsmacked. I'm just walking around and I'm like, this is the game that people have a problem with? Like I was being biased. It was as soon as I started, but it looks fantastic. So I'm like, okay, cool. Production value. This is some of the best I've seen. Like just, just beautiful, right? Dynamic day and night system. There's even areas where it snows and so forth. And that looks gorgeous. And you know, the environment slowly gets covered by the snow and it's just wonderful, right? Visually, cannot complain. I played it on the PlayStation 4 Pro, so it performed fantastic. It performed bug-free. I know for a fact that it launched with bugs and that impacted a lot of initial opinions. By the time I played it, it was a smooth experience. From start to finish, I experienced nothing going wrong. All right, so now let's talk about gameplay. So as I said, um, Days Gone is an open world third person game. You look around, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. We've already covered that. And you see a few stragglers around, you see a few zombies. Now what's cool about Days Gone is you can do stealth takedowns. You can hide behind a tree and behind the bush. You can slowly sneak up to the zombie, take it down, very satisfying. If you don't manage to take down the zombie, it will bolt 
at you. That's right. These zombies aren't going to be dragging their legs. They will run at you. Now, if it's just one or two, you're fine. It's just one or two. You go ahead. You shoot them. Now, this is where the quality of Days Gone starts to really shine. So, we've already established that it's a looker. And if you use the photo mode, it really, really does a good job. But the first thing I noticed, <clears throat> this is going to sound dark. When a zombie ran at me and I shot it in the head and it died and it fell down, this is going to sound dark, but the way the ragdoll physics of the zombie fell down and face planted in the ground was so satisfying. And this did not stop with the zombies. You also have human enemies, right? Don't worry, this will be spoiler free, but you do um, eventually start getting human enemies who have their own guns and so forth. And the amount of times I was at a shootout, and an enemy is bolting towards me or they're running or whatever the case being and I shoot them and the way the developers and the animators and the programmers right would get the body so ragdoll physics is basically it's it's the physics right you know when you shoot something dead in a video game or kill it and it falls down and it's not a pre-scripted animation that's ragdoll physics right it was actually introduced by um 3d studio max um back on the playstation 2 i remember as a student studying that and using that engine at the very start it was, it was really fun anyway <laughs> physics have obviously shown my age here uh physics have obviously evolved heavily since then but just having physics isn't enough right because it looks weird when all of a sudden a zombie is going or a human and they're running and they have a pre-scripted animation and then you shoot them and then the ragdoll kicks in and then you get this funny weird glitchy whatever i don't know what it was but for some reason the way a body fell down in days gone whether it was a zombie whether it was a human was so realistic and satisfying and the reason why i know that is because i noticed normally that's not something i'm paying attention to but as i kept gunning down people and zombies and the like and trying to survive i'm like that looks fantastic there was something superior about it and then i realized that same attention to detail seemed to go everywhere and wasn't exclusive just to the ragdoll physics and so forth you also had melee, which was also very satisfying. You could do some fantastic takedowns, and not even just takedowns, just melee combat itself, when you would smack the zombies in the head with whatever weapon you happen to find, was fantastic. There was also throwables, so you could get, you know, the classic Molotov clock, uh, cocktails and um, grenades and so forth. Mix that with the stealth mechanics, mix that with the shooting mechanics, and the fact that it would give you a little bit of a slow-mo, so then you could try to be more specific in particular. Fantastic, but... That isn't the prime meat and juicy sauce of Days Gone. Days Gone, when it was shown and stuck around for the final game, was all about the hordes. And the hordes create a truly unique experience and it ended up being a lot more than simply a gimmick or something that simply set the game apart. Shooting down a few stragglers, a few random zombies, a few people, whatever, no big deal. But if you're not careful, occasionally you come across hordes of zombies and remember these zombies run so when you see like 50 of them up a mountain and one of them manages to see you and then they're all running at you do you have any idea how terrifying it is looking up a hill <laughs> and seeing 50 zombies just Usain Bolt in their way <laughs> towards you it is terrifying and hilarious and then forces you as a gamer to think on your feet. So you're shooting, you're seeing bodies drop, you're seeing the other zombies just step over, <laughs> the frontline zombies that have died going after you, you're throwing molotovs at them, the first bunch are ripping up in flames, you're seeing some zombies burn to ashes, you're seeing others that are still on fire, still running towards you, you're throwing grenades, you're running for your life. It is an absolute rush, especially for the first half of the game where your character is a lot weaker you can't really handle these hordes so then you are literally running for your life and it is a rush running around turning around trying to take a headshot continuing to run the game then always encourages you to use your environment so you try to use traps in the environment you will try to narrow the zombies down into a more clear path so then you can go ahead and shoot them like it really was good and by the end you have hordes by a hundred plus and it felt so invigorating you would die so many times trying to beat them because normally you'd run away but sometimes you could clear things and it really was awesome 
So now is probably a good time to mention the motorbike that you can escape on and another part of Days Gone which was actually done brilliantly. So as I said, I'm not a motorbike fan or enthusiast. So the fact that the main character could run around on a motorbike, I couldn't care less, I'll be honest. Uh, that being said though, the way they implemented the bike and how you emotionally connect with it and how it helps and how it develops and how you can upgrade it is done super well. So normally when I'd come across those hordes, I would make sure my bike is somewhere nearby. You always have your bike close because the game world is massive in, in, in a good way. You don't, you're not going to be traveling around it on feet. You're going to want to use your bike. So when a horde is chasing you and you're running away to where you've parked your bike and grabbing the bike and doing a 360 and just blasting out of there and sometimes having to run over some zombies or drive through the horde, you could take down one or two, but you couldn't take them all. They would stop you. Uh, was a real rush. What's cool about the bike and what caused a lot of appreciation was two things. One, the bike could be damaged. So um, if you kept crashing the darn thing, if you weren't careful, if the zombies attacked it, it would like, you know, light, it would light up with the smoke and so forth and you wouldn't be able to operate it. You would then have to explore the game world and come back and manually repair the bike. Now, I know this may sound like a pain, but what it does is it caused an emotional connection between you and your bike because firstly, you, you, you just had that bike, right? Um, the enemies sometimes left their bikes and you could steal them temporarily, but you had one main bike. When that was damaged, then you were screwed. And it was quite satisfying to know that if you took better care of your bike, you would have been able to more easily go to your objective. But because you were rash and you didn't think things through or you just didn't do good against the horde, then the bike is damaged. Then you have to go and you have to get the spare mechanical parts and then go back. And the satisfaction of repairing it on your bike, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, girl, I, I shouldn't have done that. You know, I'm going to take better care of you. But it goes beyond that. So the motorbike also has gas, you know, petrol. And um, in, in yeah. And um, what's really cool about the petrol aspect is it runs out of fuel. Now, again, you'd be like, why in the world would I want a motorbike that runs out of fuel? Again, appreciation. You would plan your trips a lot more. If you were just lead footing it down, not easing up on the pedal, and you were blasting and riding everywhere, then you'd run out of petrol, which is hilarious because you're going, then all of a sudden just, it loses power and it just rolls to a halt and you're like, shit. <laughs> you're like, oh my goodness, you know, and that's the first time you really start paying attention to it. But what's cool is one, you can roll the bike. So if you're committed enough, if you're patient, if you're home on a Saturday and you, you just got nothing better to do, sure, you can so slowly roll the bike. But what's good as well is you can put the bike in neutral and you can just roll down hills. So there were some hilarious times where I didn't put petrol, you know, I, I ran out of petrol and I had to push the bike up a hill that felt like forever. But once you're on top of the hill, the bike does a really good job rolling. And just a smug satisfaction that I was then getting a lot of distance just from momentum and knowing that I wasn't using any petrol at all because I used it up was quite fun. What that also causes you to do, because a bike is always marked on your map, is sometimes you have to abandon your bike and you have to go and hunt down petrol stations. You can get gas canisters and so forth. And um, you can just go, you bring it back, you physically hold it, you fill it up. And again, it creates this unexpected bond between you and the bike where you want to make sure she's filled up. You want to make sure you're taking care of her so she's not damaged and un inoperable. But it goes even further, when you go to um, you know, your safe zones and so forth, where there's camps, you can personalize your bike, you can change the skin. Uh, uh, one skin which I chose was actually a siphon filter skin. So I thought that was a nice little, nice little nod to the developer's previous work. But you can upgrade various aspects. You can hold more petrol, um, you can get better durability, you can get better boosts, because you can boost as you're riding, you can hold down a boost button, and um, you know, you can increase just how often you use that and other aspects. You can uh, improve the max speed. So there's, there's a lot of different areas that you can focus on. And it is important as well, because later on, for example, I was on a mission where I was hunting someone down. I was chasing him on my bike. And I, I'll be honest, I got lazy upgrading my bike. I couldn't be bothered. 
And so I really struggled with this mission, and my wife can attest to it. Um, I kept dying and failing this mission because I wasn't fast enough to chase the guy because I couldn't be bothered upgrading my bike. Eventually, I got lucky. I did the best shot ever because he was like literally on the other side of the screen. I jumped off my bike, ripped out my sniper rifle, and from an insane distance, managed to shoot him. And I'm like, oh, thank goodness because I, I didn't have the equipment um, for this job. But it was nice that I had that eventually you do build this connection with the motorbike because it's your investment. It's that thing on you that you see continuously being changed and upgraded and so forth. And you know, you don't take for granted the fact of how far it can take you because you need to think about petrol. You don't take for granted the fact that it can be damaged. So even though you can, you know, go flying and fly off ramps and stuff like that, you still want to be careful about it. You're not going to just go um, mindlessly charge into zombies and running them over because again, you can get damaged. So you build that appreciation. Okay, so the other part of the game that we need to discuss, which is really surprising, because this is normally an area in games, which I don't care. I'll, I'll admit it, there is a bias there, I don't care, but I don't really care about dialogue that much. I don't pay attention to such things. However, I couldn't help but notice, and I've seen other fans um, comments online and they feel exactly the same, is the surprising quality that the dialogue in this game has. In other words, normally when you see a game and characters are talking, it feels like a script. It feels like a entertaining script that pushes the story forward and all that. But nevertheless, they don't quite talk the way you and I do. There is none of that back and forth sass. That is normally the case, right? In real life interactions. In Days Gone, every time our main character talks to other people, whether he's being nice, whether he's being a D, whether he's sassing them feels so real. It feels like you're watching actual conversations. No one's trying to be perfect. It's just real people talking back and forth, giving each other a little bit of shade, teasing each other, saying things naturally that come to their minds as well. It is done so well. You honestly care about every single interaction that you see in this game. And it is shocking that this is one of the things that the reviewers had a problem with, saying that the character is unlikable, the character is unlikable, the dialogue, um, you know, wasn't interesting. We apparently played very different games. This game has some of the most heartwarming characters and realistic takes that I have ever experienced in the medium. And trust me, talk to Days Gone fans, they will confirm this. And as I said, this is an area which I normally don't pay attention to. So I'm not simply fanboying because dialogue is something I normally pay attention to. I never pay attention to dialogue. And yet this game, Days Gone, had me paying attention. Now, I'm not going to spoil Days Gone's story, but let's just say, a lot happens and it's a long game so you definitely get value for money but let me share my experience of what happened when i was done with the game right when i was done with the game i was obsessed with it just thinking wow this game's fantastic you know what do other people have to say online and then i started thinking about other odd um things then i started remembering those negative reviews and i'm like why was this game getting negative reviews why was there a serious lack of hype why was sony barely promoting this they were keeping quiet about such an amazing game it wasn't making any sense so i started doing my research online and having a look and seeing what other people have to say and it turns out a lot of people in fact the majority of days gone's fans went through the exact same transition as me we all saw the reviews that you know they weren't so positive and this and that a lot of us you know probably couldn't afford to just buy a game which had lackluster uh, hype building around it to begin with we got it later on a sale we then vigorously regretted that thinking i wish we supported this sooner because it turns out this game was freaking fantastic and the fans that have read online you're as passionate about it as i am heck a lot of you like the game even more than me and i think really really highly of it so then i started um retracking down those old reviews you know one thing which i think is fun is to after you've enjoyed a game read reviews and see if you agree with the reviewers or disagree and so forth and that's when i realized that there were some key takeaways 
from reviewers that I ignored at the time, even though it felt a bit sus. And now I realized, oh dear, Days Gone was literally sabotaged by racists. I know that's that's a really weird thing, and I promise I'm not uh, baiting you or whatever to keep looking to the end of the video. That's the thing that really happened, and it went over my head because that's not something I keep into consideration when I'm reading what's meant to be professional reviews, right? These are professional reviewers. They're meant to give us, you know, their opinions on the game. Let us know, you know, should we get this, should we not? Going back, reading those reviews, I read, you know, the parts where they were saying the characters were uninteresting, the dialogue wasn't so interesting. Like, that's fair. Like, they're vigorously wrong and I disagree, but that part is just opinion. <laughs> But then I read several reviewers saying they're just more white men. And it's like, what? And it's like, it's just more white men. It's like, hang on. They're just white biker dudes. See, that's the thing that went over my head before is why are we talking about skin color? Like, like generally, I'm like, why, why did that even come up in, in a review? Right? Like what? Like did that... And then when I started reading more of the reviews, then I realized that their opinion was heavily biased. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this explains things. Because as I said, I have never read reviews on a first party, you know, Nintendo, Sony, or Microsoft game. I've never read first party reviews where the reviewer seemed to have an automatic disdain and dislike for the product at hand. Even the first time I read these reviews, it felt like they were being a little bit unfair, even though I had never played the game. I remember I couldn't help thinking, that's really weird. Why do they seem to outright dislike this game so much? Because it was like, yeah, I haven't played this game yet, but I'd look at the gameplay trailers and so forth and the footage, and I'm like, it, it looks pretty fun. Like, I, I don't get it. But they were pushing a political message and yeah, being racist towards white men, which is just so unfortunate because a lot of different reviewers did the exact same thing. Even one review, which I remember, um, I forgot which publication it was, but it was one of the big ones. And uh, it was a female reviewer. And I remember she literally admitted that she couldn't even be bothered playing through the game like she she was just losing interest and falling asleep right and i'm like how is this why is this game apparently so terrible that it seems to be an actual chore for reviewers to play through it and give us an honest um opinion and that's when i realized they were racists against white men that's not something we should have to discuss on a video game channel that's not something that should be brought up in a video game review. Like, honestly, as an adult, as a mature man, for shame. Like, you should really be embarrassed with yourself to project your worldviews onto a game, onto a brand new IP that really needed good initial reviews to give us the confidence of saying, hey, go out, buy this, support it early. Of course, that's not what happened. We all got it after the fact, but there is some good that came about this. Firstly, the game went on to sell 8 million copies, all up total, maybe it's even higher now. Fantastic. Like, if a Days Gone 2 game ever did come out, there would be an awful lot of support. The problem though is when a game comes out, their publishers, so in other words, Sony, look at the first initial sales and then decide very quickly if the developers are going to work on an immediate sequel or if they're going to go ahead and work on a new IP. Now, as I said, initially, uh, Days Gone didn't do well at launch. That means Sony did not give it the green light and even to this day, so long after, uh, Sony's basically pretending Days Gone never existed, which, you know, that's really unfortunate. Um, you know what's funny though? I know I just, you know, maybe it sounded like I'm coming up with accusations about, you know, them being racist and so forth. But firstly, no, they do actually specifically in the game reviews refer and complain about the fact that the characters are predominantly white in this video game. So that's not a theory that, that, that I've just pulled out. These are things the reviewers 
had the audacity and nerve to complain about. But since then, we've actually heard from the video game director. So let me read out something very interesting. So even the game director, John Garvin, took to Twitter not too long ago to confirm our suspicions. Uh, stating the game didn't receive universal acclaim was because of woke reviewers, that's in brackets, so like, quotes, sorry, sorry, I actually said that, and reviewers who couldn't be bothered to actually play the game. Again, I do remember that one reviewer who admitted that she didn't even play through it. So sadly, Days Gone was literally the subject of political propaganda for the most part who, who would have thought right like imagine you were working on days gone you put your heart and soul into it for six years it's like all these people involved in so forth you're the game director you know you're this guy that i just mentioned and the game comes out and you're just eagerly waiting you're like oh i hope the world uh, accepts this you know enjoys the game i can't wait to hear and then you're reading review after review after review saying your characters are boring and the dialogue is horrible, which is not the case. Saying the game doesn't look particularly good, it looks fantastic. Complaining about the characters being white, what, what? why is that even coming up, right? So that would have been heartbreaking for the team, for the game designer as well. And John, the game director, has actually since left Ben Studio. What is sad though, when you think about if we will ever get a Days Gone 2, is, so you have the main game director, right? He's left and he said what he said on Twitter. He basically confirmed what we all suspected. Um, so that's not a rumor or hearsay or anything like that. What is upsetting though, is the official Ben Studio Twitter account responded to him. Literally saying that anything and everything he's expressed is his opinions and his opinions alone and that they do not agree with anything he said. So, let, let me put this into context. The game director came out and said what really happened, which it did. You can do your own research, you can look at the reviews yourself, and you will see a similar unfortunate racist trend. All he did was call it out. He's obviously frustrated. He spent a little bit more than a decade, uh, than half a decade, so six years, working on a game. Him and the team obviously put their heart and soul in it. We've seen the end result, like it's phenomenal, right? It's always really hard to make a brand new IP. And to get buried because of politics that have nothing to do with video games, as I keep saying, politics do not belong in video games. To have all that blow up in your face and to experience poor sales, and then to have your publisher See your product as a failure, even though the lifespan of it ended up doing really well. You have to keep in mind the vast majority of those sales of those 8 millions were not at full price. Were people like me who got it on a budget and barely paid anything for it. Sure, some of them would have been full price, but the vast majority, no. So Sony saw it as a failure when they shouldn't have. And for him to come out and say what he said and just reveal the truth and to have the official Ben Studio account say, yeah, no, you stand on your own, everything you just said is wrong. What does that say for the future of Days Gone, where one, the main director, the one who seems to care about it the most, isn't even there anymore? But what does it say as well when the Twitter account defends those that attacked the game? That's what it comes down to, isn't it? Isn't that the strange thing? Ben Studio's game performed poorly initially miss out on a lot of sales they missed out on a sequel to days gone because of political driven journalists and instead of them defending the director or frankly what they should have done keeping their mouth shut instead they attacked him that doesn't sit right with me at all i'm not sure how i would feel about a days gone without the director and i don't know how i would feel if the person replacing him actually agrees with the very reviewers who destroyed the game and how that would impact development and what they would do to the characters. Anyways, that's the story of the underdog Days Gone. It is a brilliant game. If you can get your hands on this game, if you were slightly interested before, you should absolutely give it a chance. Fantastic, experience the characters, experience the story, experience the absolutely stunning visuals, it's, it's bug free, it's all good, it's a lot of fun and this may be a diamond in the rough underdog which we may never get a sequel to. So enjoy it for what it is. 
enjoy it for the fact that everything seemed to line up perfectly that Sony for a time invested in this brand new IP they paid for six years worth of development it came out it's great it's on PC as well go enjoy days gone and that's it it's a fun gorgeous game that being said ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for hanging out with me you have a wonderful 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 morning afternoon or evening depending where you live on this big blue planet of ours god bless you all take care all right bye bye